Hi, everyone, and welcome to our session where we will talk about edge architectures. My name is Ildiko Vancha. I work as Senior Manager of Community and Ecosystem at the Open Infrastructure Foundation. And among other things, I'm a big open source and edge computing enthusiast, and I have a co-presenter today. Hi, my name is Gaget Chatari. I'm working uh, as a senior open source specialist at uh, Nokia in the central uh, open source program office. And I'm also participating uh, in several open source and edge activities, mostly together with Ildiko. <laughs> Hungarians rule the world. Yes. <laughs> And now let's jump into uh, the middle of all this. Um, so uh, what is edge computing? Um, there are a lot of debates out there about what edge computing and edge uh, are. So we will not join and deepen the debate here. Um, I only wanted to just emphasize on that edge computing is part of an evolution path uh, as we are kind of moving on from uh, from cloud computing only, and uh, edge computing is making it possible to uh, to get the computing power out of the large data centers towards the edge and towards the end users, let them be humans or machines. And when it comes to edge computing. Um, a lot of people and organizations are focusing on the edge part of it because that is new, it is exciting, it has a lot of new opportunities, and it also has a lot of new challenges to solve with a really small footprint, um, also uh, with location and, and circumstances that you all have to be aware of and plan for. But uh, Edge is also always on the edge of something, on the edge of the network, on the edge of your system. So it is always part of a larger um, ecosystem and architecture. And that is what the Open Infra Edge Computing is focusing on. The Open Infra Edge Computing Group is a top level working group that is supported by the Open Infrastructure Foundation. And we have a broad industry outreach uh, and uh, a focus on uh, infrastructure software. And what we are looking into really is the massively distributed systems that are behind edge computing use cases. So really how it looks like from core to the edge, edge to core, or edge to edge in some cases. Uh, the group is uh, focusing on collecting use cases uh, in the edge computing area to understand the requirements and challenges that they have. And we are using these uh, learnings to build uh, reference architecture models uh, to also help um, anyone out there uh, who is trying to put together uh, a solution for an edge computing use case, uh, regardless of industry segments or what kind of organization you're working for. Um, so these architecture models are really uh, there to, to help the industry and also to identify gaps and, and see what we should all working on in the open source ecosystem uh, to fill those. Um, you can uh, check out the group on the wiki uh, the link is on the slide and also we published two white papers so you can see all the exciting use cases that we've been working with uh, that covers telecommunication, retail and we even have a use case on how to modernize and automate shrimp farms. Uh, so you can also find the uh, links to the white papers on the site as well. Uh, go and read them. Uh, they are not very long, but they are even more exciting. And we can move to the next slide to take a, a deeper look at uh, what we are talking about when we are talking about uh, architecture models. So um, our learning um, is that there is no one size fits all solution out there. There is no one particular tool or one particular configuration that will work for everyone. Um, I would think that is not coming as a surprise to you either. Um, so what to do uh, when we are facing challenges like that, that we have to prepare for um, really multiple options, a lot of requirements that are similar but still different 
different. So um, the approach that the uh, Edge Computing Group has been taking is that we are looking into some crucial requirements that most of these use cases are sharing. And our focus so far um, was on connectivity. So what happens when you're losing connection between the central data center and an edge site? Um, so it really depends on your use case um, in how you would like to approach that. And uh, in our learning, there are really two uh, big groups um, that we can put the use cases into, which is how much autonomy you want your edge site to have. And in that sense, we came up with two models so far, the centralized and the distributed control plane model. And uh, the two big difference between the two is that with the centralized control plane option, which is the top diagram on the slide, um, the, the control functions and services are all running in the central data center and the, uh, the edge sites are running the compute uh, workload only. And in this case, uh, most often, if you lose connection, your workload is still running on the edge side, but you will not be able to launch a new workload and you will also not be able to do many other operations either. And in some use cases, this is totally acceptable and uh, you're, you may want to rather focus on increasing the, the workload's footprint on your edge side. Uh, but when you need full autonomy on the edge, uh, then you need to look into which control functions move to the edge as well, which will reduce the footprint that the, the workloads can use, but you will have um, all the options available for you, even in case of a connection loss. So that is what we have been focusing on so far. And when it comes to solutions, um, we started to build uh, these architectures with uh, OpenStack, also with Kubernetes components and see uh, how it looks like when you're putting this into action. And we also collected uh, a couple of projects uh, for you that Gergay will describe uh, that are matching one or the other uh, architecture models to give you some examples. So I'm giving the word to Gergay. Thank you. So as Yudhiko mentioned, we, we collected some, some uh, projects related to Kubernetes, which are implementing either um, the sentence control plane or the distributed control plane uh, architecture. And we also uh, selected some projects to show you uh, in this presentation, which um, provide support for, for edge use cases in a, in a different way. So for the sentence control plane, um, uh, implementation where we have all the uh, control functions in a central location. The, the two most notable um, uh, projects are, are K3S, which is a, um, a very small IK2 Kubernetes distribution package to a single binary, what you can run on on uh, all of your locations, and uh, and it contains uh, a full Kubernetes distribution with uh, basic features for, for networking storage, uh, load balancer, and, uh, and ingress controllers. And also it has a, a component so-called tunnel proxy, which makes it possible that, that the, the communication between the central location and the edge location, um, what is needed for the Kubernetes control plane is, uh, is possible to, to uh, do over um, uh, uh, one. So, um, so in this way, uh, K3S is a, is a complete uh, solution for uh, uh, for providing um, uh, edge uh, infrastructures, um, and um, it is very famous about its like slimness. So it's very very uh, slims down uh, Kubernetes distribution. The other. Um, a project which implements the centralized control plane is, is Cube Edge. Um, uh, this is a bit more um, complete solution than, than KCS because it has also uh, some features specifically for IoT workloads. So on top of the, the, the infrastructure services which are running a uh, similar way to K3S, um, uh, all the control plane workloads in a, in a, in a, a central location um, and and uh, running the 
uh, the control team for, for running the, the workloads in, in the edge locations. Uh, so on top of these control plane functions, uh, QBedge provides also uh, features for, for IoT, like um, uh, a message broker and, uh, and event bus, uh, and also some uh, device management uh, features. And here also we have this uh, capability that the, the control plane uh, is able to co communicate uh, over the one uh, via this um, uh, edge and cloud hub components of the of the architecture. So these are complete implementations. They all they have all the bits and pieces which are needed for for Kubernetes to to run uh, workloads, and they are. Um, providing a, a single installer where, where you can uh, download and install um, the, the solution. So these are implementing both of them, uh, the centralized control plane uh, architecture. And uh, for implementing the distributed control plane where, uh, as learned from Indico, we are running the, the Kubernetes control plane in a, uh, in all the locations, and we have some kind of a federation uh, on top of that, um, a bit different approach is, is needed. And this is implemented, for example, in, in Starting X, which is a, uh, an edge infrastructure solution providing both Kubernetes and OpenStack as, a, as an option to run uh, different uh, uh, workloads. So, Starting X is a very good um, uh, fusion between Kubernetes and, and OpenStack for, for edge cloud infrastructures. And this is, a, again, an integrated stack. So it has uh, all the extensions and all the, all the needed components to run workloads on, on these uh, um, uh, solutions. And it has a, has a central um, uh, management function, which controls the the uh, data and image synchronization of of uh, of the different uh, edge um, sites. So it has this uh, complete um, control plane implementation for for the different edge sites, and there is one uh, central function which which is managing all of these, and it can handle. Uh, for example, the, the cloud infrastructure software updates of the components um, and so on and so on. Uh, uh, the other project that we selected is not a complete solution. So in this sense, it's different from, from the others what, uh, uh, what I described in, uh, in the previous minutes. So it's, uh, it's KubeFed, it's part of, uh, of Kubernetes. Uh, it, uh, it, um, it's an implementation to federate the Kubernetes API. So basically what it does is it's running the federation agent in, in, in one Kubernetes cluster. And, and um, from there, it is capable to schedule workloads to different Kubernetes clusters also. So it's basically a scalable API uh, for Kubernetes. It is, uh, a necessary component for building uh, edge cloud infrastructures purely based on Kubernetes with a distributed control plane if a single entry point uh, to the infrastructure is required. So this, uh, this project provides, uh, provides that. Um, but to, to have a complete solution, there are lots of other components uh, needed. Um, because they are not part of KubeFed, so it's it's not not a complete stack basically. And um, there are two other projects that I wanted to highlight, and and uh, we wanted to show this because these are somehow uh, not like uh, vertical solutions of edge cloud infrastructures, but somehow like horizontal uh, uh, projects which provide features to build edge cloud infrastructure. So one of these is, uh, is MetaCube. So MetaCube is a bare metal host provisioning uh, service for, for Kubernetes. 
and um, it has this capability to to provision um, nodes over layer three with the help of of Redfish, which means that that even uh, worker nodes running in in remote locations can be provisioned and can be uh, attached to to a cluster or can be um, uh, installed as a separate uh, Kubernetes cluster with the with the help of of uh, of MetaCube. MetaCube implements the hardware management layer of of this. So again, MetaCube is like a necessary part of an edge cloud infrastructure um, uh, solution. But this is a very important part because remote manageability of of the hardware is key in case of edge cloud infrastructure. Because as we as we learned from Yeldico in the in the introduction side, uh, edge cloud infrastructures are about uh, massively distributed um, cloud infrastructures and and uh, to be able to manage these in a in a in a scalable way, we need automation on all layers of of the stack and and um, hardware management is an important uh, part of this. The other project is uh, related to networking and it's called Submariner. And what it does, it make uh, makes it possible that that pods running in different Kubernetes clusters. Uh, can communicate with each other, and it's uh, built in a way that that it opens VPN tunnels uh, between these Kubernetes clusters and um, and channels the traffic via these uh, these VPN tunnels. Also, it provides uh, uh, service discovery feature across these uh, these clusters. So this is a very good uh, baseline to implement a distributed um edge application which is able to communicate from like edge to edge in a in a in a mesh kind of way so for this submariner is a great uh, networking uh, solution so these were the the example projects what we wanted to highlight we know that it's not possible to list everything um we just selected the let's say most notable examples uh, which are implementing the the architectures, what we identified as the most prominent ones from all the architectures. But also, we are now working on on um, defining hybrid architectures when Kubernetes and OpenStack components are part of the edge cloud infrastructure in uh, in different places and in 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 different roles. But let's hear more about the future plans of the group in the next slide from Ildiko. Uh, so we have a call for action for you because as uh, Gergely was uh, mentioning, uh, in the interest of time, we only had the possibility to bring only a handful of examples to you. Uh, but I think it already showed very well that there are a lot of components and building blocks and options out there that you can choose from to build your edge solution and edge infrastructure with. Um, but we would like to um, understand it better, how the, the landscape is shaping, how the edge solutions are shaping, and how the edge requirements are evolving over time. So um, we are inviting you to come and collaborate with us and uh, give us any feedback, um, for instance, about about the, uh, the two edge architecture models that we have so far, the centralized and the distributed control plane model. Um, is it something that your use case or your solution already fits into? Or do you have a third uh, architecture uh, that doesn't really fit into either of these buckets? Um, we would like to learn about all that. And also if um, you have a project that you're working on that we did not talk about here, but would uh, fit into this work, um, please come in and share the details with us. Or if you have a use case that you're trying to identify your edge architecture uh, for and need some help, guidance, or you would like to talk with someone about that, uh, we would really be interested in learning about your use case and requirements too. Um, so the, the slide um, 
contains all the information about the, the weekly meetings that we have, also the uh, the mailing list and IRC channel where you can get in touch with the group. Um, so come join us and uh, work. Uh, let's all work together on uh, finding um, solutions for the various edge computing use cases that are out there. And with that, I believe that we arrived to the Q&A part. Um, so we are hanging out here uh, at the event. So um, come and ask questions now or start a discussion or find us during KubeCon or reach out to us on the email addresses that you uh, saw at the beginning of the presentation um, or, well, find us anywhere. Um, we are all over the place um, participating in open source groups uh, up on social media. So. Um, you should be able to find a connection to us. Thank Try you. Try the front edge. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.